In 2019, viewers of the CBS Evening News were introduced to Nora O'Donnell when she was named anchor and managing editor of the nightly newscast. Given that she's been a fixture on television for decades, viewers might assume they know this journalist pretty well. But there's much more to learn about Nora O'Donnell. Before Nora O'Donnell joined CBS, she spent a decade at another network, NBC. It was there, she revealed in an interview with CBS Watch, that she got to know the late Tim Russert, NBC News' senior vice president, Washington bureau chief, and longtime moderator of Meet the Press. O'Donnell recalled running into Russert in hallways, saying, He would always say, What do you know? It'd be 7.30 a.m., and I'd be sitting in the car outside the D.C. bureau, dialing up my sources in case I ran into Tim so I'd have something to say. Russert, she explained, quote, taught me that every day you have to bring value to the the table. Other mentors who helped her throughout her career include ABC News' Ann Compton, who recommended she get a Rolodex so she could organize all of the contacts she makes. NBC News' Andrea Mitchell told her, quote, "...outworking the competition is a key to success." And there was CBS News' Bob Schieffer, who briefly served in her future role when he became interim anchor of CBS Evening News after Dan Rather's 2005 departure. She described Schieffer as, quote, "...one of the most important important mentors in my entire career," adding, "...he took me under his wing and taught me the importance of being a great storyteller." In addition to being a network news anchor and veteran journalist, O'Donnell is also a mother of three. And even though she's famous, she still faces normal parenting hurdles. As she told CBS Watch, she tends to run a tight ship when it comes to how much time her kids spend staring at their phones or playing video games. Revealing that she limits how much time her children spend staring at screens, O'Donnell described kids' screen addiction as, quote, "...the number one issue affecting most parents." As a result, she and her husband husband, chef, and restaurant owner Jeff Tracy have laid down some rules. Her kids can't have their phones after 8.30 p.m. or at breakfast, lunch, or dinner. She and her husband also don't allow their kids to use phones when they're in the car, as well as any time they're in, quote, a family environment. Having worked with so many veteran broadcast journalists, it's a no-brainer that O'Donnell has picked up a lot of guidance during the course of her career. Yet it was a seemingly innocuous question that led her to take stock of where her work-life balance was at. She recalled sitting next to a colleague at a wedding when he asked, quote, "'How are you doing?' In her response, she discussed her job and her kids until he interrupted to clarify, saying, "'No, I've asked you, how are you doing?' This, she explained, was a, quote, "'profound lightbulb moment that I was not talking about myself.'" She said, "'Your work and family define you, which is important, but not the same.'" In May 2020, O'Donnell interviewed White House whistleblower Dr. Rick Bright for a 60-minute segment. Bright, an immunologist at the Department of Health and Human Services, had filed a formal complaint alleging he'd been fired for refusing to get behind a government-led effort to promote the anti-malarial drug hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. Did you ever think that hydroxychloroquine would be a game-changer? No. Never. As Deadline noted, her report was viewed by former President Donald J. Trump, who did what he often did when something on TV irked him. He tweeted about it. Dissing O'Donnell's ratings and calling her a, quote, third-place anchor, Trump accused her and 60 Minutes of, quote, "...doing everything in their power to demean our country, much to the benefit of the radical left Democrats." He blasted Bright as a, quote, "...disgruntled employee who supports Dems, fabricates stories, and spews lies." Appearing on The Late Show, host Stephen Colbert asked O'Donnell Donald to share her thoughts on Trump's comments. It doesn't bother me if I know we've got our facts straight and we can always stand on top of that as, as, as journalists. Nora O'Donnell has long been an advocate of physical fitness, something she outlined in detail for an interview with Runner's World. According to O'Donnell, she started running track when she was 13, and running has remained her favorite form of exercise. However, she admitted that juggling her career and family has presented challenges in maintaining her regimen. She said, "...as a working mom, I struggle to find time to work out and go for runs. I usually run two to three times a week and work out with a trainer once a week. In fact, she credited running for providing her with added endurance, which she said was important, adding, "...there can be some really long days in journalism." Asked if she uses her time while running to prepare for an interview or go over a story, she insisted she did not, saying, "...I pretty much focus on running. I'm listening to music, enjoying where I'm running. I spend so much time at work that I try and enjoy the run for what it is and try and be in the moment." 
In March 2019, O'Donnell was on a spring break vacation with her family when she wound up in a South Carolina hospital to undergo emergency surgery. In a series of messages she shared on her Instagram story, O'Donnell wrote that she was awaiting surgery to have her appendix removed before it ruptures. Having an organ removed, she added, wasn't exactly what she planned for her spring break. The surgery was successful. Afterward, O'Donnell's husband took to Twitter to let everyone know that she, quote, lost her appendix today. O'Donnell wrote on Instagram, I am down in Oregon, but learned some valuable lessons this week. Listen to your body. If you are in pain, see a doctor. Don't wait five days like I did ignoring pain. It's an interesting phenomenon in tabloid journalism that whenever two women are partnered on television, unverified reports often emerge that they're at each other's throats the second the cameras turn off. Sure enough, a report in Page Six claimed Gail King was pushing CBS This Morning co-host Nora O'Donnell off the show, with a so-called insider calling O'Donnell, quote, toxic. CBS News president Susan Zerinsky responded by blasting the story as, quote, offensive and 100% false. A few days later on CBS This Morning, King announced that O'Donnell actually was leaving the show, but only because she'd been promoted to anchor CBS Evening News. At one point, King went off script, telling viewers that she had, quote, no beef with O'Donnell. It's so amazing to me, Nora, that after seven years together, that now people would say that you and I have some beef. That same night, the two attended an award gala together where King was asked by Entertainment Tonight why the media had embraced the rumor. She replied, "'Cause we're women, that's why. This never happens to men." When O'Donnell made the jump from CBS This Morning to CBS Evening News, she also experienced a hefty upgrade to her salary. According to a report in Page Six, O'Donnell had been, quote, lobbying to get the gig even before the previous anchor, Jeff Glore, was hired in the fall of 2017. Page Six estimated O'Donnell's new annual salary as being somewhere between $7 million and $8 million, a raise from around $5 million per year. However, The Hollywood Reporter estimated that, financially at least, the big winner in the CBS News staff shakeup wasn't O'Donnell, but Gail King. Sources told the publication that O'Donnell's former CBS This Morning co-host landed a far richer deal after O'Donnell's move, reportedly receiving a raise that would see her earn $11 million a year. In any case, O'Donnell has done quite well for herself. The Celebrity Net Worth website estimates that she's worth $18 million. In 2017, O'Donnell went public with a health scare she'd experienced. In a feature she wrote for Good Housekeeping, O'Donnell detailed how, after undergoing a routine but oft-delayed skin check, she received a message from her doctor that the results of a biopsy were in. Her anxiety escalated before she finally spoke to her dermatologist, who told her she had melanoma. What I knew about melanoma at the time um, was just how deadly. Uh, it can be. O'Donnell admitted she was stunned by the news, but her doctor offered an assurance that, quote, we caught it early and it's 100% curable. However, the doctor also indicated she wanted to operate as soon as possible. The surgery, O'Donnell wrote, went well and involved slicing a three-inch long piece of skin from the upper left corner of her back. The operation left a scar, but she wrote, I choose to see it not as something ugly, but as a reminder that early detection saves lives. It might even have saved mine. And while while the scar represents the end of a scary chapter in my life, it also marks the beginning of a new wellness journey. O'Donnell has also opened up about what her life was like in the midst of the pandemic, joking in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, each day is starting to feel a little bit like Groundhog Day. However, she got serious, saying, I'm grateful for my health, but I'm worried about people. People's health and the people losing their jobs. I do think it helps to be focused on the role that those of us in the broadcast media can fill, a public service, working alongside public health officials and helping to share information that hopefully saves lives. When speaking with with Parade about what it's like working as a reporter during a pandemic, she said, "...covering the coronavirus is unlike any story I've ever covered. This is unprecedented and new, and Americans are vulnerable and scared." She went on to say that she believes journalists play, quote, "...a vital role during the pandemic," telling the publication, "...I've never been so proud to be a journalist. The questions journalists ask let people in charge know what the public is thinking." Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Nicki Swift videos about your favorite celebrities are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.